So we're now in this season of Epiphany. We are walking, we are walking towards Lent. Lent is coming pretty soon, which means that this group over here will be on a pilgrimage. Yeah, well, that's what we'll start calling your, your uh, the musical presentation, pilgrimage. But during this time, it, it is an opportune time to remember what this season of Epiphany is. If you remember, our Christian year starts with Christmas, the incarnation. For God so loved the world that God sent his son, his one and only son, into the world, not to condemn the world, but so that the world would have life. life. So Christ came to us. The word of God came to us. God came to us in the flesh in the flesh of the vulnerability of a child born in Bethlehem to parents who, after he was born, had to go flee for their lives into Egypt and to stay there until Herod the king had died. And then this child and his parents came back and they came back and settled in Nazareth where Jesus grew and lived <coughs> Eight, experienced human life growing up. Within this, as we remember this and think about this, the epiphany, the revelation of God unfolds just like a flower as it pokes up out of the snow and unfurls ever so slowly. Like, we can't really think about that right now with the snow falling, but... <laughs> It's going to happen. There is flowers under the ground that are starting to shift, to start thinking. This is a revelation, an epiphany that slowly emerges. And this is so with Christ, the revelation of who Jesus is. And then as he grew up, then his mother took him to a wedding. You remember the wedding at Canaan? What did Jesus do at the wedding in Canaan? Water into wine. That was his first miracle. And he did it because his mother told him so. Just remember that. <laughs> and then after that, he went on. He was baptized by John in the Jordan. And then he wandered in the wilderness. And he received his call. And then he started picking up these disciples. These disciples who were, who were they? Who were these Disciples, the first ones that were called. Fishermen, everyday people. And the first ones were named, you know the story. Peter, his brother Andrew, and the sons of Zebedee, the sons of thunder. They were great to party with. So Jesus is grabbing all these disciples around him. And then, according to Matthew, where we pick up today, in this season of epiphany, in this season of revelation, in this season of unfolding, this is Jesus' first time publicly teaching. He is taking on that mantle of rabbi, that, that title and that person of, of teacher, and he is calling this crowd around him, and he goes up to a high spot, as they say in the scripture, a mountain. And he goes up onto this mountain, and he looks over the masses of the disciples that are there, disciples meaning students, people that are there to learn. They are gathered around him, and they are eagerly waiting for every word that he says, just like you guys. <laughs> The fact that you're not asleep yet after the lock-in is amazing. So there he is, Jesus standing on the mountain, giving his first teaching. His first teaching as a rabbi, his first teaching as the word of God made flesh in the world. The word of God that came not to condemn, but so that people will have life. So that is what we hear today. It is important that we dwell with Matthew 
in this fifth chapter, his fifth chapter, for this Sunday and the next four Sundays, we're dwelling in this word, this word of God. We're dwelling in this fifth chapter of Matthew. Today, the verses 1 through 12 are important because in these first 12 verses, Jesus is actually kind of revealing not only who he is as a teacher, as a rabbi, as the word made flesh, the God coming to us so that we may have life. But Jesus is also revealing to us what a disciple is. The expectation that Jesus has for those that follow him. These blessings that we hear that Jesus gives to us are indications of what the blessings are for the disciples. If you follow Jesus, these will be the blessings. But in that, if you listen carefully, is also what you can expect. You will thirst and hunger for righteousness, but you will also be persecuted because of Jesus. We hear these blessings, but at the same time, we hear what the cost is. If we are fully, truly, with every ounce of our being, going to follow Jesus, to be a disciple of Jesus in this world. If we follow Jesus, it means that we take risks, not for ourselves, but for others. We take risks just like God. We are in this world not to condemn people, but we take the risks so that people may have life. That is why, as Pope Francis says, pro-life means that in every aspect of our being, it, from birth to death, it is about making sure that everybody is honored and valued as a human being and has every opportunity to fully experience life as God imagines. It is the fullness of life that we are looking at. This is our calling. So when the disciples came and sat there around Jesus at the mountaintop, we heard what God was and is for us as God comes to us here and now. And we also hear, if we are going to be disciples, what that means. And what that means is that if we are called to be disciples of Jesus, it means that perhaps, and we always will struggle with this because we're humans, our images of God and our images of Jesus may change. If we are to truly embrace the gospel, to hear Jesus again and again and again as the rabbi, the teacher, the word of God made flesh that came not to condemn but so that we may have life, our images of Jesus may actually change. We may hear a Jesus that we don't like. We may hear a Jesus that actually rubs us the wrong way. We may hear a Jesus that is teaching us something that we are having a difficult time reconciling with because he's challenging some of the things that we may hold dear and valuable and that actually we think gives us life, but in all reality, in the eyes of God, actually takes life from us. This is what we have to unfold, unwrap, in the season of Epiphany, in the fifth chapter of Matthew, dwelling in the Word is to understand who we are if we say we are Christians. And what does that mean today, right now, here? in this community called Southminster, here in this community of, of Waukesha, Wisconsin, the United States, in this world, what does it mean to be a Christian that embraces Jesus as our teacher, that incarnates, takes into our very marrow of our being this first teaching that Jesus ever gave? During these weeks ahead, 
I invite you to dwell in the Word, to take that fifth chapter of Matthew and read it over and over and over and over again until you basically almost have it memorized. And I know some of you can memorize things. But the purpose is so that when we enter into the season of Lent, we are prepared. Because Jesus gave this sermon for a particular reason at the very beginning. It is his first sermon. He wants us all to understand the implications and what it means. So that when we get to that point of his resurrection and his ascension, and he's given us the great commission we truly understand what that means and how life-changing that is, not only for us, but also for us, the people of God who are sent out into the world, just as Jesus was sent into the world, not to condemn the world, but so that the world may have life. All praise, honor, and glory be to you, O Christ.